What's up, everyone? This is Aerodynamics Podcast number 18, and today we're talking about the aerodynamic drag and the aerodynamic design of hybrid blend target bullets. So the aerodynamics of bullets in general. And to do that, we're going to be looking at a paper called Numerical Investigation of Hybrid Blend Design Target Bullets. And in this paper, what they looked at is a couple of different designs for bullets, and they looked at some CFD of these bullets traveling at different velocities because bullets don't just travel at one velocity, they travel at quite a few different ones. You can have subsonic, transonic, and supersonic. And so in this paper, they go on and say that the this is a highly focused area in this field, and it's the shape of the nose and the penetration angle of the penetrator. And the hybrid blend design target bullets is one that uh, has one of the best aerodynamic designs, and this is effectively because it utilizes a nose shape, which is slightly different to just a one um, type of curvature, has two curvatures, hence the name hybrid. So the design of these bullets plays an influential role in terms of aerodynamic characteristics and its dynamic performance capability on hitting targets. The objective of this research is to perform a comparative analysis of three different geometrically varied shapes of these bullets by numerical simulation using CFD. Based on its performance characteristics, such as aerodynamic coefficients, shock wave existence, turbulence, dissipation rate, and normal drag force on the bullet surface. So they're using all of these different parameters to determine which bullet is, is best. And in the introduction, they go on and they describe bullets in general. They say, according to recent research, very low drag bullets have shown significant improvement because of its low drag and efficient performance under high winds. In addition, very low drag bullets have very high ballistic coefficients. So ballistic coefficient is a is a number which isn't used too much in aerodynamics. It's used in some topics, but for bullets, it's a very important number. It's not only the drag and et cetera are important, but the ballistic coefficient. And what a ballistic coefficient is, is it couples the uh, drag with the weight. So effectively it describes how, how good a bullet is at traveling through the air because not just the drag is important, but also the weight, because the more mass you have behind an object, the the longer it's going to take to slow that object down. So if you have a very aerodynamic um, design, so very little drag, but it's a very lightweight bullet, it's not going to go very far. It's going to drop very. It's going to drop quite a lot, and um, you're not going to be hit too far away. If you have a heavier bullet, then you can hit further targets. You obviously need more energy to to um, get it that far in terms of accelerating to begin with, but um, it resists drag a lot better. So in other words, a high ballistic coefficient is more desirable. The better, the higher the coefficient, the further you can shoot the bullet without um, coming inaccurate. So very low drag bullets have high ballistic coefficients, which is understandable because that's one of the main things that make this coefficient up. So Brian Linz, a another um, researcher, a ballistician, found that these very low drag bullets are highly sensitive to seating depth. So this is another um, parameter for bullets, and this is, determines when the radius of the bullet starts. So if you think about a bullet, you have the, effectively the back portion, which is very square and rectangular. You have the, the um, it's like sheared off back. Then you have a fairly straight uh, walled sides. And then you get to the nose, and that nose is when you get the curvature. The distance from the very back of the bullet to the start of that curvature is the seating depth. And they're very sensitive to this. This is due to the nose design it has. And further research is on the nose o design leads to the development of hybrid types of bullets. So again, this is another term, uh, O-Gyve. O-Gyve is the, uh, effectively the, the radius of this nose section. And you can have um, a few like, many different types of ogives, and this is what uh, this paper looks into, some different ogive sections. So the advantage over the combined tangent and secant ogive design lies in the improvement of accuracy for long range shooters on targets. So tangent and secant ogive designs are two different um, radii that you can have, and you can also have blends between the two. The reason behind the improvement of hybrid bullets is the combined strength of tangent and secant Ogive design in which the tangent ogive from bearing surface of bullet has minimal sensitivity to the seating depth, whereas the continuous secant ogive gives the high ballistic coefficient and also very low drag, similar to very low drag type bullets. So if you blend the two, 
then you can get a much more aerodynamic bullet and a high ballistic coefficient. So now they go on and talk about the OGIVE um, in general in um, a bit more detail. OGIVE is a term which describes a point from where the curve approaches the bullet diameter. So effectively where the curve starts. OGIVE is the is usually characterized by its length of arc radius. So its radius of curvature. For a constant nose length, an OGIVE can be of tangent curve or secant curve. If the OGIVE is said to be perfectly tangent, then the curve is defined by its very own specific radius. If the radius is longer than that, then the curve will be obtained by the secant OGIVE. Secant OGIVE is usually varied from the tangent radius to a much a, a greater radius. So it's between the tangent radius and upwards. It is to be noted that the secant OGIVE results in minimal drag, particularly when the radius is twice the tangent OGIVE radius. So that's really good. Now we have a general parameter as to a rule of thumb that we can follow to make a bullet as good as it can be. It should be, the radius of curvature should be twice that of the tangent OGIVE. So now they're talking about, they go on and talk about the design of their hybrid target bullets. So on continuous improvement, the combination of tangent OGIVE into the secant OGIVE came into existence which resulted in uh, less sensitivity to the seating depth and lower drag. For bearing surfaces, tangent, tangent OGIVE starts the curve and subsequently the secant OGIVE follows it. So from the very sh straight part of the bullet, you start to have a tangent radius, then you follow into the secant radius. And there is a continuous, um, it's fairly continuous, so you don't get a bump on the bullet, it's still fairly nice and smooth. It's just that you transition to the secant um, radius before the tangent radius gets too too narrow. So for their um, bullets, they go that three cases of hybrid bullets are taken into CFD analysis. Uh, the dimensional specifics are measured in inches for the three cases and are discussed in table one. So in table one, they have three different um, bullet weights. So 140 gram, 180 gram, and 230 grams. And then they have different uh, densities so the 230 gram bullet has a much higher sectional density than any of the others. And they have slightly different um, profiles, but overall they're fairly similar. And then the numerical simulation has been carried out for different speeds, ranging from subsonic to supersonic, in which the fluid is assumed to be a compressible medium, so air effectively. And because even though it, these, some of these bullets are traveling at subsonic speeds, because it's still well above the rule of thumb of max 0.3, the air can be considered compressible. If the velocity was below 0 0.3 Mach number, then we would sort of assume that it's incompressible. That's generally the rule of thumb. And what they looked into were Mach numbers of 0 0.54, which they classified as subsonic, 0 0.9, which is transonic, and 2.27, which is supersonic flow. So the 0 0.9 Mach number, even though it's not around, it's not that close to a Mach number of one, it's still considered transonic because that's when you can get the critical Mach number um, happening. So the critical Mach number is determines when there is supersonic flow or sonic flow over an object. And so it can be, the object can be traveling at 0 0.8, for example, Mach number, but because you have a curved surface that then accelerates the flow, you can then reach the critical Mach number of one, the uh, Mach number of one at certain points, a localized Mach number. So the critical Mach number could be 0 0.8. And then you classify that as transonic flow. So with the um, CFD, they looked into the subsonic flow first. So a speed of 0 0.54 for the Mach number. And they plotted some figures, some nice figures. <laughs> they showed some wave drag near the top and bottom edges of the bullet. And they say, since three cases exhibit similar hybrid OGIVE profiles, the flow pattern remains very, very similar between the three bullets that they tested at this subsonic flow. However, as far as the size of the bullet increases, the area covering the wave zone and wake zone lengths increase. So what they say is effectively, if the bullet increases in size, the wake effectively increases and it looks like the, the um, wave drag sort of increases a little bit as well. Then they went on to the transonic bullet and they, this is a 0 0.9 Mach number. At transonic speed, the shock wave region forms at the top and bottom walls it shows this transition from subsonic to supersonic speed. So from what I can tell, uh, they don't go too much into where the shocks form, 
but what from what I can tell there's probably two on probably one at the back of the bullet. And this is where the bullet is particularly thickest. And that indicates that that's when you're first going to get uh, transonic flow. You're not going to get transonic flow when the bullet hasn't really curved too much. But at this point, the bullet has curved a lot. And so the flow is going to be accelerating the most at this point or has accelerated up to this point, And now it's the fastest in the rest of the, this, the flow. And then the supersonic speed, this is a Mach number of 2.27. They have a figure in figure eight, and it shows the supersonic wake. And from what I can tell, there are at least two shocks forming on this bullet now. So in the in the transonic, there's really only one, and that was at the back of the bullet. For the subsonic, there wasn't really any shock, but there was some wave drag forming. But now a supersonic of 2.27 Mach number, there should be, from what I can tell, at least two shocks. The first one is at the nose. And the reason why I can tell that is because upstream of the nose, the velocity is about about 720 meters per second. That's around that. Then you get this fairly discrete, like this fairly sharp point, this um, angle here, where after that, the velocity is now like around 620 meters per second. So this is this very discrete jump between velocities that indicates a shock, and that's at the nose. Then at the back of the bullet, it seems to happen again. So over the bullet, the velocity is accelerating, the um, velocity is increasing, so there's some acceleration of the flow. Then at the back of the bullet, it's at its highest, so the velocity is probably about 760 meters per second here. And then again, you have this discrete point where just directly afterwards, you have a drop in velocity of about 100 meters per second. So I reckon there's at least two wakes, uh, two wake, um, shocks forming here. And before we go on, I just want to talk about the International Aerodynamics Conference we put on every year. Check it out. We host it in October. So make sure to attend. Link in the description. Check out the instruments that we make to make your experiments better. One of them includes the Atmosphere Hawk, which uh, measures the density of the air that you're measuring in. If you don't measure the density, you can introduce a lot of errors that you don't even know about into your experiments, which makes your research harder. So make sure to pick up an Atmosphere Hawk to help your aerodynamics and check out the courses we do to make you a better aerodynamicist. Links are all in the description. So coming back to this paper, they then go on to the aerodynamic forces and coefficients. And they show a graph here which um, has these bullets at three different Mach numbers. And interestingly, the drag doesn't, like at Mach 0.54, oh, sorry, 0 0.54, the difference in drag, there is some between each three case. And then when you increase the Mach number to 0 0.9, these differences dramatically increase quite a lot. But then once you increase it to Mach 2.2, these differences aren't really that much greater, even though the velocity is two and a half times that of 0 0.9, you would expect a lot higher velocity, a lot higher differences in these drags. But uh, because you've pushed through the transonic regime, you're now dealing with a less... Um, draggy flow you can say in in this case so you're not getting these differences as great so that's interesting at a transonic flow the differences in drag between these three different bullets are greatest and then they have these really cool figures actually so figures 11 12 10 11 12 present this coefficient of skin friction for the hybrid blend, blend bullets at the three different mach numbers and they clearly show that the value of skin friction drag increases with increasing mach number What's more than that, they also, what these graphs show, I'll describe them for those listening. We have the X axis, which has the position of the bullet. It starts at the nose of the bullet. And then you have the skin friction coefficient on the Y axis. And it plots, and then so this starts at zero at the nose, and then it goes to the tail, so that the back of the bullet. And you have this really funky line, which goes up and down as you cross through the bullet's um, cross section uh, along. And it starts off with a very high skin friction drag at the nose. Then just off the nose, it drops a little bit. Then through the ogive, so the curved part of the bullet, it increases steadily um, in a fairly curve-like fashion. So it's um, not that sharp an increase. It's a nice gentle increase. And then as you reach the, um, about the, the tangent area, it drops again a little bit. And then at the, the seating position of the bullet, it increases a little bit. And then again, it drops at the base. And, all, and this is at Mach number 0.54, but at Mach number 0.9, you have a very similar graph. 
again, you, you have a, a peak, a local maximum at the nose, and you have local maximum at the effectively the OGAV, where the, the secant radius curvature meet, meets the tangent radius curvature, and then you have a local maximum at the seating area. Interestingly, when you get to a MAC number of 2.27, this curve dramatically flattens. So you do get a dramatic increase, a local maximum at the nose for this configuration coefficient, but over the rest of the bullet, it's fairly flat and it's much lower than at the nose. Then at the base, you get this drop off. So there's really only one maximum and it's a global maximum and that's at the nose. Whereas for the other two um, MAC numbers, which were transonic and uh, subsonic, you get uh, quite a few different local maxima happening. It's not nearly as flat in the graph. That was an interesting finding on there. They then went on and looked at the properties of the bullets, and they have some nice graphs that don't really uh, show too much other than just the typical colors you get for CFD. <laughs> but they say it should be noted that the terminus produced is more in case of the transonic speed. Due to shockwave existence, the terminus is produced at great, is produced, um, has a greater influence. So, what they're saying is at the very supersonic flow, so 2.27 Mach number, and a subsonic flow of 0.54, there's not nearly as much turbulence as at a transonic flow. And that's kind of uh, to be expected. We, we now know that trying to punch through the transonic region is a lot more difficult. And once you get past that, it becomes a lot easier to fly. And if you look at these graphs, you can see that the wake behind these bullets uh, is much greater for the transonic bullet than the other two bullets. It's like two or three times the, the width. So in conclusion, three cases of hybrid uh, blend design bullets have been carried, have been taken and numerical investigations have been carried out. The flow distribution, drag, force, skin friction coefficient were monitored and the terminus properties are also investigated. The key findings of this research are discussed below. The velocity profile remains constant for the three different cases. It shows that for the hybrid OGIF profile, so one that blends the tangent and the secant radius curvatures, uh, the velocity distribution is independent of the size of the bullet. So that's interesting. You don't have the ballistic coefficient effectively is then much more independent of the size of the bullet then. The other finding, another finding is that the drag force increases with increasing Mach number and it proves the drag force relations. So that's good. If they didn't find that, then <laughs> I think there would only be like this paper that would disprove it and every other paper would show that it's true. So I'm not sure if this is a, a um, groundbreaking finding that one, but the first one's good. And then the next finding is that the skin friction drag coefficient increases correspondingly as Mach number in increases. The profile of the skin friction coefficient has been validated against mathematical relationships. So that's, that's interesting to note. The skin drag does increase with increasing Mach number. It's not just the wave drag that increases, not just the pressure drag. So that's something interesting. And then finally, the turbulence effect is almost three times greater in the case of the transonic speed compared to the subsonic and supersonic. Oh, wow. So I didn't actually um, remember that the effect was three times larger. I just looked at the wake and I, looked, and I thought, okay, the wake is about three times the diameter, the width. And sure enough, that sort of corresponds to what they were saying here, three times uh, greater. So that was a nice coincidence. Okay, so that's the end of this podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out our instruments for make your primary aerodynamics. Check out the courses we make put on to make you a better aerodynamicist. And check out the International Aerodynamics Conference we put on every year. Links in the description. Peace out.